Hey, Law Officers, Brian Stevens here at Morgan Shots. Listen, our market has changed right before our eyes and the flux is going to continue in the future. You need to look at your industry and your market in a different light. We have that in spades over here at CapDirect. If you want to see what a change of pace truly looks like, where the loan officers hold the control, a company for loan officers by loan officers from a brokerage standpoint, fill out the information down below and we'll reach out to you. But only do it if you're serious. We want people who really want to make a change to their business. Now on to the show. Now I got to tell you this, case in point, by the way, yesterday was a great day for veterans, wasn't it? They can once again get representation from a realtor on a buy side for a real estate transaction. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs on Tuesday issued a temporary fix that will allow home buyers using VA loans to pay for their real estate agent's commission, i.e. the buyer broker fee. The change as a result of the National Association of Realtors Commission Lawsuit Settlement Agreement was anticipated late last month and commented on by Michelle Corridon, the Deputy Policy Director at the VA. She said that a circular would be issued while the agency is engaging in a formal rulemaking process. Okay, so my thinking goes something like this. The VA found it important enough for them to actually come out and change their rules. An agency who just a few years ago didn't make any changes to its medical wing unit until it was widely reported that veterans needing VA healthcare were dying in waiting rooms if they made it that far. Only then did the VA actually make changes. That's how seldom or slowly the VA moves. Yet within a few short months of taking away agent representation in real estate, they, the VA, came out and made a change. So you gotta think they believe this change is really important. So if you agree with our train of thought, then riddle me this, people. How many vets or active duty folks can even afford to buy a house in the first place? This whole thing right now, it's like me being worried about the menu at the French Laundry, a restaurant that is impossible for me to get reservations in. I mean, my name's not Gavin, and my aunt's not Nancy. And I guess what I'm saying is we should address the bigger issue for vets, which is force a solution to housing affordability. I mean, hell, don't do it for me. Do it for the vets. And I care about this issue for our vets because, well, my name's not Gavin, and my aunt's name isn't Nancy. I think there's a few people who agree with this position out there. So bravo, vets get representation in real estate, but we gotta solve the bigger problem. Case in point. Here's a graph that shows the difference in inventory between now and 2019. In every state, with the exception of Texas, inventory is down, and in most cases, it's way down. This is a case of simple supply and demand. We don't have the supply, we do have the demand, and unless something changes in a big way, prices will not come down substantially enough for vets to ever buy a home. If you don't understand what active duty military make, you have to. Right now, an O2 with 18 years in makes 6100 bucks per month. Now, an O2, that's a commissioned officer who's been in the military actively for 18 years. They can get representation, but the income they make, well, they'll never be able to afford a house at these prices. Further, an enlisted man or woman with 18 years in makes 4,856 bucks a month. They have absolutely no chance whatsoever. Do you see the problem here, people? This, though a nice gesture from the VA, is polishing China in the dining room of the Titanic. Now, what do you think about it? Let us know in the comments down below. No kidding, Brian. I'm married to a vet, and I have to tell you, I am so happy that we bought our house back in 2013 because the value has nearly doubled and we simply couldn't afford to buy that same house at today's prices, not to mention today's rates. I know the mortgage industry is full of those who support vets, our vet specialists, and this stuff is absolutely fantastic. I love this movement. I love the movement and thank you, Michael Fisher, for really being at the forefront of this movement. But today, guys, I wonder if it's enough. I think we as an industry need to address this message. Lenders, it's not just about educating agents and lenders about veteran loans. We need to advocate for the ability for vets to actually be able to buy homes. Listen, we're in an election cycle right now, and we might just have the attention of these candidates, even if it's just for a short moment. Do you think it would be a good idea to organize a campaign of loan officer vet advocates to push for affordable housing, if not for us, for the vets, the active duty, and even our first responders? Because if they can't get a home today at what they make, 
They don't really have any good options on the table, and I'm not hearing any of these topics of conversations from any of our pundits or candidates right now who are running for office. Meanwhile, we've got the Black Rocks and all the well-funded institutionalized investors having an absolute field day with our limited inventory. You know, those with deep pockets who can grease the pockets of our elected officials. So I think we need to take this message to our communities and to our realtor friends out there. Hell, they put you in front of these darn real estate agents, doesn't it? Ask them for their business in the process. What do you have to lose? I say this, we need an industry-wide message saying affordable housing is necessary and don't do it for us. Do it for those who protect this country and protect my family. What say you? Please let us know in the comments down below and do us a favor. Forward and share this message on all your social sites. I think this is a message right now that can't be missed because it's a moment in time. I hope this helps.